Older Redditors, what is the biggest change in our society no one mentions? The idea of a telephone number being tied to a place, rather than a person. It used to be, call the office, leave a message on the machine, or call the break room, someone will answer. Now it's mostly just call or text me and I'll get the message wherever I am. Repair shops. There used to be TV repair shops, vacuum cleaner repair shops, shoe repair shops. Things would break and then you would take them to a shop, or even go and buy a part, and fix them. Now everyone just buys a new whatever. Phone booths. Those things used to have queues outside of them on a Saturday night when people were desperately making last minute meetup changes. Now they lay abandoned and vandalized, a relic to a forgotten pre-mobile past. Here in the UK very few have been dismantled and are just standing there with the windows smashed in and the receiver swinging gently in the breeze from a tired and weathered cord. My 7 years old had no clue what it was when walking past one and looked completely baffled by the idea of having to make a call while connected to a wire. First phone booths are gone, now newspapers are struggling to stay afloat. Poor Clark Kent can't catch a break. I used to always be planning my social calendar several days ahead. If I was meeting a friend or girlfriend it always had to be at an appointed landmark, so you wouldn't miss each other. Everything now seems spur of the moment. It's a lot more flaky with people deciding in the moment what's their best option for a good time. I'm young and not a fan of this. My parents are big on having plans laid before an event takes place and the number of times I've had to ask them for lifts to the nearest city which is half an hour away is annoyingly high. It's got to the point where I'm telling my friends that if they can't tell me a few days beforehand, I won't be there. Not me, but my great grandfather, who I had the pleasure of knowing until I was 18 had some insight when I asked what invention had the most impact on him. He was nearly 90 years old at the time and his response still intrigues me to this day. He said that screens in his windows to protect him from the bugs at night changed his life more than anything else. He grew up on a farm in the thumb of Michigan, and getting eaten alive by mosquitoes at night was awful. I asked him why his response wasn't the use of the telephone, TV, or even the radio. His response was all of those things involve other people. Screens directly affected whether or not I could sleep. I don't know why, but screens were something that I had never appreciated once in my life. I live in an older house without screens. As someone who loves to leave their windows open I really miss having screens in them. The vast diversity in food. For most of us growing up in the Midwest, it was a case of if you can't keep it in a barn, we aren't going to eat it. I didn't experience pizza until 1975. Rice was a mid 80s thing. Shrimp? WTF was that? Lobster? Capital C. Nobody I know ever mentions getting lost anymore. Even idiots that used to get lost every day. Having GPS on everyone's phone has made asking for directions a thing of the past in 99% of situations. Driving to a gas station trying to find a map of where I was going is one of my nightmares still. If the gas station wasn't open and you didn't have quarters for the payphone you were pretty much fricked. Stuff is not all brown anymore. Holy frick. Back in the 1970s everything was earth tones. Brown. Yellow. Orange. Cars. Wood paneling in homes. Oh god. The wood paneling. The shag carpets. Clothes. It was all freaking brown. Go watch movies or TV shows from the 70s and notice it all. I'm so happy to be living in the colorful world of today. Yes. It started getting colorful in the 80s. It's still a change from a point in the past. It looks like it went the extreme off of way in the 90s and were finally leveling out to a good pollute. In USA, much, much less litter. You can't imagine the 1960s. Eat a Big Mac. Drop the styrofoam on the ground. Also, as bad as the current situation is with climate change, you can't imagine, unless you live in maybe Shanghai, what air quality was like, in parts of LA County in the 1960s up to the 1980s and maybe later. Just terrible and dangerous many days. I think Mad Men alluded to this once. Don's family went out for a picnic and afterwards, they just threw the trash around the grass and left. When I was growing up in the 60s, I saw my friends at school, then went home and played with neighborhood kids or spent time with my family. We only had one phone and I wasn't allowed to use it to chat with my friends. Compared to today, 
the downtime allowed for time to decompress. Teen in the 90s, I wasn't allowed to talk on the house phone because I can talk to my friends at school. Sunday was family only day. People who didn't become adults until after 9-11 don't realize how nice flying used to be. No overcrowded planes and you could roll up to the airport like 20 minutes before a flight. I had a 98 year old passenger in my cab a while ago, and asked basically the same thing. Apparently, the biggest change in the last century has been indoor plumbing. The biggest change I can think of is the switch to digital photography. Firstly, just the technology itself, being able to take almost limitless photos and see the result immediately. Secondly, the proliferation of digital cameras and later smartphones making them pretty ubiquitous. Certainly not beyond the means of most people. I'm only in my 30s and even in my lifetime. This has transformed the way people act and the things they do. People take so many more photos now. Back in the 90s, taking pictures was expensive, and being good at taking pictures took a lot of practice because you had to wait to develop your pictures to see results. But today with trial and error even an amateur can take decent photos. I remember loads of family holidays as a kid from which I have no photographs. I had pets as a kid, just rabbits and goldfish, but still of whom I have no photographs. I did loads of stuff, youth clubs, summer clubs, camping, not a single photo. I had a long time childhood friend who I spent summers with who died in a car accident a number of years ago. There isn't one photo of us both. I have some pictures of myself as a kid. It's not like we didn't have a camera, but my family maybe has enough for two or three albums from the pre-digital era, whereas I went on holiday abroad for 10 days a few years ago and I have 30 photos. And that's after I whittled them down to make sure I only have the best 30 unique sites. Some older people say young people these days are vain because of all the photos. I say the opposite. I say that these kids and their kids, and so on, will never have to lament that they only have indistinct memories of those good times, because they'll just have photos of them. They'll have pictures of themselves when they were thin and fit. Pictures of themselves with their grandparents. Pictures of their embarrassing weeb phase or pictures of those few years they were a really dedicated goth. They'll also have all these pictures of their parents or even grandparents to show their kids and grandkids. And this'll have a huge effect on so many things. Consider the JFK assassination. One of the most important events of the 20th century and there is hardly any footage of it. The Olympic torch ran through the UK before the Olympics in 2012 and I suspect there is more footage of it than you could view in one lifetime. Digital photography is amazing. It's transformative. Most importantly it's like a mundane form of magic. Don't ever underestimate what a gift it is. I've deleted more pictures of my daughter in the last year than were ever taken of me in my life. When you are pee off at someone on the phone you can no longer slam the receiver down. Mashing an imaginary button just isn't as satisfying. But you can angrily toss your phone. It won't end well, but it's an option now. Career and job stability. The average person now works 12 to 15 jobs in their lifetime. It used to be nothing like that. Most companies got rid of pension plans and loyalty programs leaving little reason for people to stay. It sucks but what choice do we have? I used to be made fun of for playing video games when I was 15-16. Piers said I was too old for video games and used to laugh behind my back. Now, everyone of every age plays them. My mom still gives me crap for being a gamer but now she plays her solitaire on a laptop instead of getting out cards. Hypocrisy at its finest lol. How uncool it once was to be into technology, computers, science fiction and fantasy, real men, or young men who wanted to lose their virginity, never admitted to liking the stuff until the 80s. To be fair when I was in high school in the late 90s it still wasn't cool to be into that stuff. I interviewed my grandmother when she was 91. She was born in 1920. Zero 01. She used to have a giant radio, like the size of a bookshelf, that ran on electricity but her house didn't have electricity. Her parents bought a car battery they didn't have a car. So every week before a ball game or boxing match was being broadcast her parents would take the car battery into town with a horse and buggy to charge it up so the entire community could come over and listen to the radio. Zero 02. She had ice cream once a year when one specific traveling vendor came to down. 03. 
Her first house cost $200. Oh four. Her first phone was a line shared with the entire neighborhood. Several farms. And her phone number was a Morse code style long long short but anyone could just pick up the line and listen in. Oh five. She drove a car for a couple years after her husband died. She still had her driver's license. It was literally a photograph of a chalkboard. 06. She had family photographs called tintypes that were so old she didn't know anything about them or who they were of. They were popular in the 1860s so they were already 60 years old when she was born. Late to the party. However, in the age of couch surfing Airbnb and car sharing sites, I sit here and remember that I had been taught not to talk to strangers, not to let them into my home and certainly not to get in their cars. Strictly speaking, I should not even be answering ARP's question. The Airbnb and couch surfing thing is definitely crazy when you take a step back, but it's also a testament to how generally good the vast majority of people are. Single income families. For those in the generation before mine, it was normal for a man's income to cover all of the costs of living for a family. For those in the generation after mine it takes two incomes. And, any good job used to come with fully paid medical insurance for the employee and his family. No copays, no premiums for the employee. Nowadays employers pass part of these costs onto the employee. My daughter is in 7th grade, about 99% of the times she's with friends, there will be some sort of discussion about who is gay and who is this and that, always. When I was at age, it wasn't even a thing, now it's the thing. At my middle school, the teacher's lounge was not any different. Half a dozen of the teachers were eating lunch, gossiping about whether or not the freshman bio teacher was in the closet. I started to understand why once I had him. Floppy wrists. Unicorn Anatomy Fridays, etc. But the adult gossip still surprised me. Nobody buys ringtones. Either they use the default or they have a song. And most people I know keep their phones on silent 24 stroke 7 anyways. This was actually a huge revenue stream for mobile carriers that rapidly vanished. The swing in education. Back in the day, teachers could hit kids, and no one batted an eye. This is bad. Today, teachers are blamed for kids' misbehavior. This is also bad. People used to make plans and stick to them. Now we say we'll meet for drinks at 6. But then text at 4.30 saying we might be late and maybe we should do it tomorrow. Or I could do it at 6.30 so we move it to 6. 30 and then when you're on the train on the way there you text me and say you forgot you had to pick up your drink cleaning and it's going to be more like 6.45. Yada yada yada. I dropped my iPhone in a toilet two weeks ago so I went a week without a phone and now I'm using a piece of old crap Blackberry that's impossible to text on. So I make plans and stick with them. The other day I told my soul let's meet for drinks at 6. Something happened. He was a little late. I ended up doing the crossword puzzle at the bar having a beer and we met at like 6.30. The world did not end. Pretty recent change, but people have gone from expecting TV to be delivered in contained episodes to wanting everything to be a series with a main storyline. No grand revelation really, but I bet that's due to a change in how we watch. With streaming and DVDs it's a lot easier to watch a big story in one go, compared to having to remember it over multiple weeks. I'm 53, I'd say the lost art and discipline of writing letters and or diaries. I feel pretty safe to say I will never be remembered for any email I've sent. It used to be that correspondence took time and effort and left a lasting memorial. If you have heard old letters read at funerals, you'll have a sense of the value the culture no longer captures. Smell. Everything used to stink of tobacco smoke. Offices. Homes. Stores. And if you didn't like it you were fussy or pathetic or weak. Nowadays everything stinks of fake perfume like Febreze. It's not any better, but at least, as far as we know, Febreze doesn't cause cancer. I swear, everywhere I go smells like weed now. I don't remember the smell as a kid at all, but now passing cars, apartments, the streets all reek of it to me. It's so weird. Medical science advances make people live longer, but the quality of life at the end is often a nightmarish. 
dragged out experience that goes on for years and years. In movies it's always a sudden death or one where it happens in a relatively short period of time and family gets to hear their last words in the hospital before they peacefully close their eyes. Real life is the person's mind and body slowly falling apart and degrading over like a decade until it collapses. In my opinion euthanasia should be legal. If I don't want to go through that I should have the choice not to. We give dogs a better ending to their lives than we give ourselves. The amount of animals we see in our neighborhoods. When I was a kid, we would go out in our suburban backyards and catch lizards, turtles, garter snakes. I lived in a large urban center, so it was not like there were farms all around me, and yet the diversity of wildlife was huge. My kids were lucky to see squirrels. I'm certainly happy that when I take my kids to McDonald's we don't have to worry about someone sitting down next to us and lighting up a cigarette, or at the grocery store. My elderly co-workers have been telling me about the good old smoking while at work in the store days. Fixing things around the house. Friends of mine are always amazed when I fix something around the house on my own without either calling a repairman or just throwing it out and buying a new one. Come to think of it, the whole idea of a repairman seems to have gone away. The spread of news and current events. Before about 1970, a news junkie was someone who subscribed to a weekly news magazine and two newspapers. Back when broadcast TV was king, a typical news addict would only have an opportunity to stick the needle in his arm once or twice a day, when he read his morning paper, and or when he watched his local channel supper hour or evening news. The latter was basically a rebroadcast of the former, and in either instance he would be limited to 20 minutes of national feed, 20 minutes of local news, and 20 minutes of weather sports. All the local channels broadcast their news hours at exactly the same time, so his choice was between one or the other, not which one to watch first. Then the VCR came along with its time delay, and cable with its multi-channel abilities to broadcast East Coast timed news to West Coast audiences, and vice versa, and news became a slow and steady IV drip, instead of a once or twice daily injection right into the vein. And then some crazy person came up with the idea of a 24 hour news channel. He was clearly insane. Who the heck would be up to catch the news at 3am? What would have changed since 11 o'clock? The only people watching TV then would be heavily invested in Bacall and Bogart. Not in what Senator Bumhump said. Then came Desert Storm and 9-11. And tens of millions of casual news watchers began tuning into a cable news channel even before they put the coffee on and didn't turn it off until they went to bed, a habit men are kept, after the crisis passed. Today, that IV drip has become a never-ending, never-slowing torrent, always on, always available, always beckoning, always faster. Even now, the hourly news cycle is condensing itself into a 30-minute news cycle, because its already frantic pace is driving the viewing public deeper into attention deficit disorder. Now, Consuming news is like living your entire life with your face just inches from a torrential waterfall, and always knowing that you are able to knock yourself unconscious with the power of its flow, at any time of the day or night, just by tilting your head slightly in its direction. The lack of middle ground, in almost everything. Everyone talks about how polarizing everything is now, but no one talks about the core root of the issue. 20 years ago everyone got their news from the same four sources and then digested it as a community. Together, you've always had your fringe players, but everyone accepted a lot of compromise back in the day, because we didn't have alternatives. You had to mingle with those you disagreed with. Now, anyone can find a specialized interest group, news source, or circle of virtual of friends that will agree with every insane thing you have to say. So while it's good to be connected and find friends it is isolating all of us. I was just talking about this the other day, it seems like the media tries to push people in the extreme left or right and shuns neutrality or grey areas. Life is one big grey area, no point in polarizing everything, it just causes unnecessary friction. Smoking in bars, just going out for the night, meant your clothes were going to smell, and at the time, I was into it. But looking back, going to punk shows in those conditions was pretty terrible. Getting all hot and sweaty in hazy smoke filled locals, with poor ventilation, freaking sucked. If the bar was small enough, and the band was popular enough, the place would be packed from front to back, making the temperature super hot, 
and you'd be unable to breath really. You'd have to keep leaving the bar just to get fresh air, or risk passing out. Jobs. They existed. If you needed some extra cash, you could just get a temp job for a little while. If your current job annoyed you, you could just quit and go somewhere else. Not the end of the world if you lost your job. Paying a bill used to take a long time. You'd line up at the post office or call a number and read out your details. You'd try to save up as many bills as you could to pay at the one time because the process was so tedious. But you can't have a decent bar argument. Not fight mind, but argument. That can stretch for weeks or even months. Thanks smartphones. I tell you Kirk Douglas is dead he must be dead he'd beat least a hundred if he was still with us. He has to be. Nope. You're right. He's alive. Eli Warlock. Check Eli Warlock. I know for a fact that he's still Ollie. Nope. Wrong there too. Or frick it all to heck. Man I miss this so much. I fondly remember arguing with my teenage friends about whether some actor played a role in some film or whether or not giraffes evolved long necks because they willed it. I honestly believe that the pre-smartphone era conditioned me to be able to write persuasive essays just because we argued about crap all the time. Exchange telephone numbers that began with a word, where the first two letters represented the initial two digits of the number. For example, my phone number as a kid was Walnut 6 1500 926 1500. This meant we were on our local phone company's Walnut Central Exchange. It was kind of like a local version of today's national area codes. Everybody used this format, no one gave out their phone numbers as seven digit numbers. We also had party lines. 3-4 houses on the same line and all rang at the same time. Picked up the phone to listen if it was already in use before dialing. Not pushing buttons but actually dialing, the phone. Sometimes the nosy neighbor would listen in on the call. You could hear them pick up their receiver. Private lines were awesome. Christmas used to be a much, much bigger deal. We would drive through town in Decembers to see all the pretty lights. Now maybe like one guy has lights and his name is always Paul for some reason. Paul's decorate. I'm not really older, but I have older parents. It's getting less and less common to have parents who were drafted into the military. When my dad was young, all the kids in his classes had parents or grandparents who fought in World War II. Nowadays, it's very rare to meet someone else my age who has parents who were drafted. Everyone now has a fountain of information known as the internet. People used to go to libraries to gain information, but now they have it at their fingertips. And a large number of them have no idea how to access that ubiquitous information trove in a meaningful manner. Googling seems to be second nature to a lot of folks. To others, it's a complete mystery. They have little idea how to formulate a search phrase that would return relevant results. One could probably make a decent killing running a class on that. I'm not that old, but when I was a kid, my family and I went to Family Video, a movie rental. I remember seeing one half of the store filled with VHS, and the other half filled by their DVD counterparts. It wasn't long until DVD started winning over. That is one of the few transitions I've witnessed. You just made me feel way way older. Video stores with Betamax going to VHS is what I remember. It probably seems pretty obvious on the surface, but attire has drastically changed. Hear me out, though, I think that the way society views fashion, clothing, and attire in a general attitude is completely alien to the world I grew up in. For starters, there seems to be a bigger focus on aesthetics before utility. I cannot count the number of times I've seen people roaming around in tight skinny jeans that have pockets smaller than a Roman dagger. It's insane. Another strong trend really stands out in what you guys wear on top. Shirts are way tighter on guys than they were years ago. No one mentions the fact that it's impossible to go out and buy a loose shirt unless you want to look like you've donned an undersized snuggie. Back in my day, everyone wore good old fashioned togas, which could carry scrolls, documents, edicts, and the like beneath their flowy, white robes. Unfortunately, they could also carry knives, which were used to stab me 23 times at the base of the Curia of Pompey. You had a good run, although, I admit wearing a toga just looks comfortable. Smoking. Up until about 1990 or so, it was routine to have indoor smoking in public places, bars, restaurants, bus stations, 
your break room at work, there were ashtrays everywhere. Food portioning and meal times. I'm younger than 50 yet I remember when the small size at MCDS was the large. I remember not eating between meal times. Fast food closed at 10 p.m. Snacking was discouraged or not possible. Everyone touts how our food is so much healthier, but not when there's so much, so cheap, so available, in such large sizes, along with the physiological stress of upsizing and two furs for a small amount of money. This is why we're fat. Frequency of fatal car accidents. In the 1950s our family would take a 5 day cross country drive to visit relatives on the other coast. On an average of once a day, we came across a fatal car accident, often with screaming victims. It was quite emotionally jarring to a young kid. By the late 1970s, I took the same trip twice without seeing a single fatal car accident in 4 to 5 days time. I rarely saw them afterwards. The advent of safer cars and better roads has definitely improved the safety of Americans on the roads. But now, I work in a developing country where seeing a dead body on the road is commonplace. Here, it's mostly a result of bad road engineering and a lack of traffic law enforcement. It makes me really appreciate the safer environment of a first world country. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.